welcome to the 2023 Engine Performance Expo. You are looking at some of the greatest minds in engine building, and now you are looking at Lake Speed Jr. Not I am Joe mind. Costello, and we are back once again for what has become a yearly tradition in the engine building trade. Lake, welcome back. Happy New Year. And we just saw a group of people that are going to be taking us through and guiding us through so many great moments of information as we build on what we've done over the past couple of years. Oh, Joe, it's an all-star cast. I mean, those are the greatest minds in engine building, and they're all right here in Piney Flats, Tennessee, and we've got a, man, we have a plethora of information to be disseminated this year. We have tons of awesome videos. We actually have two engines. So we got the Engine Performance Expo LS that we've been developing. We went through last year. We ended up Right around, I think, 1,046, 1,047 horsepower yeah. out of that engine. Just. Right. All bone stock parts, you know. But this year, we've added in a second engine. So, uh, we found one of my dad's old NASCAR engines. Yeah, the, the Koi Smile, right? This is a great story. I'm so excited about this. Because this kind of spawned at the previous Engine Expo, right? Like, how do we showcase new technology? And you took that ball and ran with it. Yeah, so we actually found one of my dad's old engines that he had been using uh, for vintage road racing in the shop. And we're like, hmm, this is literally a time capsule. What, what engine technology was in 2002 when the engine was built? Here, 20 years later, let's take it apart. Use the same block, same head, same manifold, same oil pan, but just change the pistons. The rings, the cam. Talk about the stuff we've been talking about in the expo and find out. You know, kind of, you put up or shut up, right? <laughs> if you do these things, what happens? Right. How much horsepower can be gained with 20 years of technological advancement? Right. So we dynoed the engine this past summer at, at Pro Motor. So tomorrow afternoon, Dennis Borm from PME will be sitting right here with me and you, and we can talk about that project a little bit. We won't tell you now what the outcome was, we can tell you this, that that engine, when we put it together and after sitting for 20 years, and we dynoed this summer, it only made 477 horsepower. Wow. So it was down, but it still ran. It didn't, and when we took it apart, we really couldn't find anything wrong with it. It was a bit of a mystery as to why the engine didn't make more power than it did. So. As we go through today and tomorrow, we'll address what we did to it in detail, and then we'll, when Dennis gets here, we'll show you what it actually made. Spoiler alert, if it was negative, we wouldn't be talking about it. <laughs> right, right. So. It's pretty impressive, you know. So between taking the Engine Performance Ex Expo LS and improving it, and then taking Dad's engine and improving it, I think we're going to have some pretty great real-world examples of what the technology we've been talking about for these well this is three years now the fourth episode of all the stuff we've been talking about it's time to put up or shut up and i'll definitely tell you the night before we dyno dad's engine i was as i was nervous right because it's like this is really put up or shut up moment right because all those great minds we just saw they all helped contribute to this project so if we couldn't make a good number then we should all go home but we didn't have to We're go not home. going home. We are not going home. Uh, so over the course of the next two days, and we encourage you to subscribe. For those of you on YouTube, click the bell, share the show. Uh, this is the kind of thing uh, for this year, for the first time, absolutely free, and anybody can watch, and you can spread it all over your social media. And many people watch after the fact, right. uh, months ahead. Uh, we encourage you guys to do that as well, because this is about sharing information. And every one of our guests, they've got something to contribute, whether we're talking about how to store your engine, we're talking about fuel pressure, all all these right. different uh, aspects, whether you're a racer, a bracket racer, a round track racer, you will learn something over the next two days. We've tightened up the show, and it is going to be great. A little faster pace, so as opposed to having longer build videos, these are going to be a little bit shorter, faster pace uh, process in the next couple of days. And, you know, it's funny, I was listening to a podcast from Formula One Drive, it's not Drive Survive, that's a TV show, Netflix. Formula One Beyond the Grid. Okay. Uh, it's a great podcast. I was listening to it, and they said, you know how the drivers, actually after the season this year, they had a dinner, all of them together. First time in 27 years they did that. And it's, what it shows is this the new generation we're in now, is that we're in a place where 
collaboration. Right? DW used to call it coopetition, yes. right? That we're working together. In the old days, people kept information to themselves. Today's uh, world, we're actually sharing technology and we're helping each other move up, move along. But and it, it is a community and there's friendships, there's relationships, and uh, we all got together. And as we get started, though, we start with a heavy heart. We do. There was some real sad news this week. So we, before we go for, th further with the show, we really had to pay tribute to, to Danny Jessel, uh, who's literally one of the foundations of this industry. I think uh, that we need to pay tribute to Danny and his legacy. So we've asked uh, John Callies, uh, Billy Godbold, and Ben Strader to say a few words and to help us kind of memorialize Danny. Guys, Danny Jessel. Well, uh, thanks guys. You know, this is one of those times where it's kind of an honor to be asked to say something that nobody ever wants to have to say and to lose a friend like Danny Jessel. You guys had a lot more time with him than I did, but uh, he had such an impact on our industry. One of my favorite memories is, you know, I was walking around the PRI show and my feet hurt and I sat down to just take a break and I looked up the next thing I know Danny comes over and he sits down next to me and he goes hey I just wanted to say congratulations on your spinal tap project and I thought oh my gosh I didn't even know that he knew I was working on it you know but it was like he always had this smile I always had this energy and and the things that he did that made my life easier as an engine builder like I feel like we just rode on his coattails for all the all the impact he had on our industry so it's uh, it's sort of an honor to be asked to say something about him but at the same time it's one of those things you wish you didn't, mm. you didn't have to do you know yeah, like, yeah john you knew him the longest so you know yeah uh danny and i guess first got together in 72 and then in 74 i did the big chief head and and danny i wanted him to do the rocker arm system on it of which he did it was a very successful program but first i'd like to say our hearts and prayers go out to his family mm. and everybody at Jessel and uh, Wayne I mean his his uh, wife his child I, it's, it, it was a terrible shock because at PRI I didn't re even realize Danny was in trouble and uh, he was such a pioneer on everything and he never stopped thinking mm -hmm. he just was one of those guys that was always thinking about how to make stuff faster better and certainly his product line is is beyond reproach he does a beautiful job so anyway i know they're going to carry forward but it is it's a sad day tremendous uh life and career uh billy you know thinking about what you do and have done now and what he did so far uh back in the advancement of technology right like to be able to come up with the, the concepts to keep valve trains steady drag racer of course at first and mm -hmm. then expanded into everything no, I mean, his fingerprints, when we picture a American V8 race engine, Danny Jessel's fingerprints are all over that. You know, when you look at, when you just look at the engine, most of them you're going to see a belt drive up front. You know, he made that work. There's people had that idea, but there were some engineering details. There were some things that you had to do, the seals, you had to get a good belt, you had to make everything right. He, he executed that at such a high level. The rocker arms, when you take out a valve cover, the way rocker arms were laid out, you know, everybody was doing straight with offsets and they were all bent and everything. The, from the aluminum rocker arm to then how the stands were done and everything, he did all that. I mean, this is a guy who in his office, you know, most people when they get successful and everything, when, you know, they might buy an airplane, they might buy a boat, they might buy a cabin and the thing. He would have tinkering shops in his office. He would have a bridge port. He'd have lathes. He would, you know, he was most happy when he was tinkering, had an idea, and then tried to whittle it out out of steel and aluminum. Um, you know, when I first started, um, you know, I love road racing. And so 24 Hours Le Mans is like one of my favorite things ever. But when we started doing camshafts for teams in 24 Hour Le Mans, they were all flat tap at camshafts. Rollers were legal, but you couldn't run them because nobody had a roller lifter that would finish a 24-hour race. Well, Danny just wouldn't take that for an answer. And he built this lifter that was so robust that it didn't have any trouble 24 hours. And that wound up becoming the lifter that everybody runs in NASCAR today. That, that 
you know, because NASCAR used to be flat tap at Cam's in the Winston Cup because it was the longer races. He built a lifter that would run for the whole 24-hour, you know, whole 24-hour Le Mans for that thing. Um, you know, Danny, I grew up, you know, Scooter was sort of my mentor and Harvey Crane was, was my professor. And I went to Harvey's all the time. Um, Danny Jessel is like the Ed Iskadarians, the Ed Winfields, the Harvey Cranes. He's in the Mount Rushmore. He is the pantheon of engine builders. Um, you know, he started getting interested in the AETC, which is a lot like the Performance Expo. And I decided, hey, look, I'm going to be this guy's friend. So every time that, you know, and he always saw me as a competitor. I always saw him as a hero. And, and so, like, every time he'd go have, you know, I'd watch, and I'd be staking out in the back. and like, where's he going to sit down? And every time he sat down to have a meal, I made sure I'm just right up there next to him talking to him. And, you know, eventually we became very fast friends. I got to help on the Equal Eight and be part of some of that sort of things. But, you know, it was like that was one of those guys that you're like, Okay, if I become anything in this industry, I'm going to leverage that to become this guy's friend because he's my hero. Does he know that you manipulated him? Like, oh, absolutely. Okay. Yeah, you know, it was totally. You know, I, I let him know Fair afterwards yes. that, that, <laughs> you do that. That, that this is absolutely you're my hero. And it was weird because for Danny, he saw because I was involved in valve train, he was in valve train. You know, he'd be working for one cup team, I'd be working with another cup team. Somehow we weren't working the same, but he always saw it was kind of like a competitive side being a drag racer, and it's like. No, Danny, you are not a competitor. You're my friend. You know, um, I'll do anything in the world to try to help you achieve anything you can. And, you know, it's going to be so interesting because this industry is better because Dan Jessel was part of it. Yeah, and he left us a template, right? Like right. he gave us a, a way of thinking about problem solving and right. about running business. We were talking the other day about how good he was, you know, and and uh, and, and treating people. You know, mm -hmm. he just, all the things that you would want to be when I grow up, I want to be like, Danny Jessel, mm -hmm. yeah, that was great. I yeah. said he was a hero, and I remember AETC, the, the last time I spoke, I was so prepared, and I had this great presentation, I got up and looked down, and the first person I saw in front of me was Danny <laughs> Jessel, and I had a complete panic attack. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm like, I don't know what to say, because I can't talk about this in front of that guy, because <laughs> he knows stuff, and I don't. He's Danny Jessel. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But he was a real, like you said, just a champion of our industry, somebody mm -hmm. that did everything the way it should be done and gave us something to look forward to and look up to and say, he's our role model. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I mean, the thing that you said, like, you know, a lot of us try to figure out how to make a business plan than make a product. Mm -hmm. Dan's like, well, we need this. So we're going to make this and then we're going to figure out how to sell it afterwards. Or we're just going to make this because I mean, like he made the equal eight just to show it could be done. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, it wasn't a, there wasn't a class. There wasn't a way to make money off of it. It's just, this is the way I think an engine should be mm -hmm. built. And the same thing, like the belt drive, this is the way a belt drive should be done. The rocker arms is the way a rocker. The lifters is the way a lifter. Everything Clamshell is bearings. Good. Clamshell bearings. Yeah. This is the way it should be done. And then if people adopted it, it was like if it was successful business-wise, awesome. Yeah. If it wasn't, well, he still made something he was proud of. And he was going to make something he was proud of first. Yeah. And then if you build a business case, great. great. If you can't, okay. And we're going to learn more about the Equal 8 over the course of the next couple of days as well. We're going to feature that. and It has run an NHRA comp eliminator now and, and just uh, amazing stuff. But it's unfortunate that we have to go through this, but I always think about what the person that we are honoring would want us to do. Right. And uh, it is my guess, and of course, John, you, you knew Danny the best. What do you think he would want us to do here today with this, uh, with this program? Go forward. And that's Danny. I mean, you know, Danny was, I mean, we were a competitor, but still a good friend. And Danny doing it in the U.S., U.S. people, I have, I wish we had 20 of them, mm, you right. know. But Danny built a gorgeous business, and it's going to continue to succeed. And, uh, but we will miss Danny and his thinking. You know? Yeah. I mean, he was just a wonderful guy. Mm. Yeah. Danny Jessel and family, rest in peace. We miss you and, and thank you for what you've done mm. for our sport and, our, uh, and this trade here. Now, Ben, we're going to move forward. We're going to talk about uh, these engines, and we're going to keep Danny in our thoughts and, and our prayers. And, and you guys, uh, you guys went to work. Fuel pressure. You guys started uh, 
working the project and you I guess found we, a yeah, we bit. should kind of where do we where do we end off last year right so we ended last year making a little over a thousand horsepower but we ran out of we had problems, problems to solve right yeah. so you say how would danny attack it he would say well let's find the problem and let's go solve it and so that's what we did all year mm -hmm. we worked our butts off on this thing going it can be better it's our fault if it doesn't get there so we weren't going to let that happen we, we fought through a bunch of different issues and and it just kept climbing and it kept climbing and it kept climbing so i think we have a lot to show this year it's going to be cool excellent so everybody out there hang with us we got two days of great content and starting off with these two yep. working on an engine let's check out the video Hey everybody, we're back. It's me and Lake here in the Hey everybody, we're back. It's me and Lake here in the Dino Cell this time. And yes, sir. Uh, you know, we've been working on the Engine Performance Expo engine for quite a long time now. Yes. Been through a number of different iterations and um, made some big power. We did, yeah. So I kind of wanted to share with everybody what happened along the way and what changes we made to be able to do it. Right, because we definitely hit some limitations along oh, yeah, the way. Absolutely. And so it's kind of a cool learning process to kind of see sure. what those limitations were. Some of that came out when we did the expo. So if you right. guys remember, we ran the engine naturally aspirated and everything was mm -hmm. great. Yep. Then we bolted on the supercharger and everything was even greater. Oh yeah. And, um, but what we found is we ran into a limitation right away where our fuel system in the dyno just couldn't keep up. We had right. way more engine and, and boost because what happens is when you go up and boost, you, you inevitably raise the fuel pressure, which taxes your fuel pump and all that stuff right. harder. And so I the think fuel, that point, the fuel pump just couldn't keep up with the no. level of fuel supply needed to make that level of boost. That's right. And in fairness, the, the pump was rated for about 1,000 horsepower, and we made 1,046. So right. no complaints. It did right. its job. And so the obvious solution to us was, well, shoot, let's just put a second fuel pump. Right. Which was actually pretty easy in our dyno cell because the way that we have it set up is I have two different fuel tanks right. that would go to the same pump. Exactly. And then the pump, you had valves you could switch. And the reason that we did that initially so we could try out all kinds of different fuels. fuels. Right, yeah. We realized pretty quickly, though, that, well, shoot, we could also put the same fuel in both tanks if you wanted to. And then you don't run out as much or you know, um, so on and so forth. That worked out really good when we wanted to upgrade the fuel system because then all we had to do is buy the identical fuel pump yep. and put it on there. So that's what we did. Mm -hmm. um, and then of course we needed a second regulator and all that. And, and so we did that. We ran the engine and it was vastly improved. All of a sudden we could turn more RPM, we could make more boost. But the trend that we were seeing previously where you would start the run and your fuel pressure would be quite high, right. it would tend to taper off at the end really severely. I think we started at about 70 pounds of fuel pressure and we ended at about 30. Wow. Which yeah. is really not good. Now, what saved us was using that Holly EFI system. Yes. <laughs> the closed loop control from the oxygen sensor was going, hey, wait a minute, we're too lean. And it was... It was... Need more fuel. Yeah, it was temporarily fixing our problem because... It was increasing the pulse width to the fuel injector. So right. if I have less pressure going in and I hold it open longer, I can get back to the same fuel flow. Yeah. Problem is, that's a temporary fix because eventually you can't open the injector any longer, longer. Yeah. and you're still going to run out of fuel. So yeah. we squeaked by at that 1,046 level. Mm -hmm. We put another uh, fuel pump on, and then we could really crank it up. And it was great, except that we noticed the problem was already starting to come back at the higher power level. Right. And at first I thought, well, geez, how can that be possible? Like, we have two fuel pumps now. Yeah. And then it occurred to me that I hadn't actually looked at the entire fuel system together and go, where is the restriction? Well, right. where the restriction ended up being was our fuel pressure regulator. So for those of you that are out there unfamiliar with EFI systems and how they work, what happens is you, you have fuel coming into the regulator, and it's got a spring-loaded diaphragm at a preset pressure it opens up, and instead of fuel coming straight across and going out to your engine, some of it will bypass and go back, back to, to the, the tank, tank right? Yep. So this particular regulator was set up with a dash, uh, what is that, a dash four inlet, or yep. dash, dash six inlet, sorry, dash yep. six, six inlet, inlet, outlet, and six back to the tank. But when you looked in here, the holes were actually really tiny. Yeah. Compared to the brand new Holly regulator, or Earl's regulator that Holly yep. sent us, we're using a part number 12846ERL, if you want to look it up. Yep. And it used dash eight fittings everywhere. So it uses <laughs> an eight ORB in, eight ORB out, and an eight ORB return. Okay. So we realized that the problem was we had one regulator that was 
big and, and really good, but we had kept our old regulator. Right. So that new fuel pump couldn't live up to 100% of its capacity. Right. So this was the restriction. Yeah, this was the restriction. And so yeah. it didn't just magically stop being the restriction since we got more fuel pump. Right. It was just more of a restriction in the way. So even though the extra fuel pump allowed us to get to the higher power level, we had to go back and rethink the entire system. So now what we've done is we went back and got a second Earl's regulator. Yep. So literally now what we have is two completely separated fuel systems, two fuel tanks, two fuel pumps, two fuel filters, and two big regulators. Now, we can still valve them so that we can run the same fuel in both, both. To, to an engine right. if we want, and that has dramatically increased our power capacity of the dyno cell. So without the help from Holly to figure that out and get the right parts, <laughs> you know, you would have chased our, our tails forever. So hopefully our struggle will make your struggles less. Exactly. What a day, what a day, what a day. Uh, yeah, my brain, my brain is swollen. I've learned so much today. He told us, don't start cars. We are not going to listen.